Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, I want to do something just a little different to honor someone that's very special here uh, this week. I don't know if you know or not, but I haven't lit the candle yet, and I'm going to light it now. And the light, we've been talking about the light all month. And remember L-I-G-H-T, living inside God's highest truth. Living inside God's highest truth. That's how we can remember that. This morning, I'm going to light this light, not only representing that light, that eternal light that continually is flaming within us, but for all those that have gone before us and have uh, lit our path, have lit our path. And so this morning, Reverend um, Phil Pearson is with us. And Phil, would you stand? Phil, would you stand? Light, representing the light that Dorothy and Phil <coughs> gave to this ministry for so long, so many years, and um, we are so grateful to have you here with us, and especially all the work that you did for this ministry. Thank you, Rosella, and I feel that I'm very honored to be here, and it's just special to be sharing this time with you, and I honor this ministry, Rosella. Thank Bless you. you. Like I said, we've been talking about holiday light and living inside God's highest truth, living inside God's highest truth. And so today, I thought I wanted to continue that, and we're going to continue it tonight. So I hope that you're all coming tonight for the special candlelight service. But we're really going to dive into this and, and understand, really understand what is this time of year all about. That it's not just about the outside trappings of Christmas. That it's also about the inside trappings of Christmas. And that's the very special one. And so the outside trappings of, of Christmas often get, uh, we get caught up don't we? We get caught up in, at this time of the year. How many of you are you still have things to do? Oh, that's yeah. part of it. Yeah. yeah. No. So I have an affirmation for you. I have an affirmation for you. God is directing my every step and blessing all my activities. I am on a divine schedule and all unfolds in perfect timing. Amen. 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 Let's say it together. I'm going to say a little piece at a time. <laughs> Hello. God is directing my every step. God is directing my every step. And blessing all my activities. And blessing all my activities. I am on a divine schedule. I am on a divine schedule. And all unfolds in perfect timing. And all unfolds in perfect timing. All unfolds in perfect timing. <laughs> all unfolds in perfect timing. Timing, yes. And we know that's true, don't we? So we breathe into that and we accept that. And we we go now further into, into this wonderful experience that we are at the door of with our hearts open and our minds open and willing and ready to accept the gifts, all the gifts that this season has to give to us. We're willing to receive it. Be willing to receive this year. Really open your hearts and minds. So some of us um, have been caught up in the outside uh, story of Christmas which is all about the, the gift getting and the gift giving and all that special stuff, the cookie baking, the fudge making. I was making fudge this, this um, week, and I have to tell you that my husband accused me of being stingy. <laughs> because when he licked the bowl, there wasn't a lot left. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
but he got enough. <laughs> so that's about the outside, isn't it? The outside, the outer um, story of Christmas. And Christmas, of course, is also that, that time of year that we look at the story of Jesus and the birth of Jesus. And Jesus, perhaps, was the greatest man who ever lived. He was born in a stable because there was no room in the inn. Wise men and shepherds, uh, they followed him, uh, followed a star to him. And as colorful as this story may be, it's really also an outer story of Christmas. It's an outer story of Christmas. So where is the inside story? The inside story is within us. The inside story is happening within each one of us. And I love what Brother Angeli said. He said, though Christ a thousand times in Bethlehem be born, if not, if he's not born in thee, thy soul is forlorn. Thy soul is forlorn. So what's happening inside? So at this time, we get all busy, don't we? We get all busied up with the outside, and we try to make the outside trappings of Christmas really meaning, <coughs> excuse me, really meaningful and special. And then it, we get to the end, and we feel kind of empty. Because where were we in it? And that's what this is talking about, the inside story of Christmas, the inside light of Christmas is allowing that Christ to be born in us. That seed is a potential that is within us, that lays dormant, waiting for us, waiting for us to come to it. And when we look at the symbology of the inside, <clears throat> the Christmas story, <clears throat> excuse me, we are given a road map to birthing that Christ within the light, living the light from within. In fact, the Christmas story has a lot of personal meanings for each one of us beyond the literal meaning. And today what I want to do is I want to take three symbols from that story. I don't want to talk about that because they have a lot to do with the light. And I hope you all join us tonight because there's 12. And I'm going to fill in the rest of them tonight. So there's the carrot. <laughs> well, so we're going to look at them, and then what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can then apply them in our life. It's one thing to know about them, but then how do we apply them? You know, how do we live them? <clears throat> we are often asked, why was Jesus born in a manger? You know, why was there no room in the inn for him? In Bethlehem, it is not the innkeeper's fault that there was no room. It was simply a matter of lack of space. Lack of space. So metaphysically, what could that in symbolize? Could it symbolize the mind and the heart? Is there room in your mind and your heart for the reflection of the Christ within you? Or is there lack of space? Is there room in your mind and heart for all that Jesus stood for or is there lack? Is there room in your mind and heart for God's highest truth to reign? Or lack? So what are God's highest truths? Love. Is there room for love in your mind and heart? Or are you filled with past wounds Hurts, expectations, and conditions? Peace. Is there room, or are you filled with unrest, upset, worry, and doubt? 
forgiveness and compassion? Is there room or are you filled with resentment and anger? Acceptance. Is there room or are you filled with judgments? Miracles. Is there room for miracles? Or are you filled with fear and attachments to appearances? Deep understanding and learning. Is there room for you and your mind and hearts? Or is your ego so involved that nothing else can come in? Are you so attached to being right that no deepening can occur? Wondrous possibilities. Is there room? Is there room for wondrous possibilities within you? Or are you too tied to what can't be done rather than what can? These are all God's highest truths. There's many, many more. We could go on and on and on and talk about them. But these can make a difference in you and your life if there is room. If there is room. The second idea is the idea of the shepherds tending their flock. So here these shepherds were, they were working diligently in the, the fields, watching their flocks, when the angel of God came to them to tell them that a very, very special child was born. How are we like the shepherds watching our flocks? Metaphysically, what are our flocks? Our flock is our thoughts. There are beliefs, there are attitudes, and our feelings. We must lovingly watch over our flock. We must keep it under control and keep it from running rampant. Keep the flock safe. We must keep the flock focused on God's highest truths. Have you ever had a bad day? <laughs> no, no one here. Right? No. Oh, no. no. What's the first thing that happens when you get some news that's not so great? Where do you go? Why me? Why me? There you go. And so, in that moment, to be able to get hold of that, because that's part of your flock. And in that moment, what is it that we say? Cancel, cancel? When we wake up to what we're thinking? In that moment, that's what it means. And, and you know, these times are actually a gift to us because they help us identify those weeds within us that are ready to be pulled. So it's not a time to beat ourselves up and feel bad about it. It's a time to say, oh, wow, look at that. That is not going to do me any good. It's not going to bring goodness to me. I'm going to cancel that thought out. I'm going to change that thought. That's what it means. That's what the shepherds uh, represented. So watching over our flocks. It's easy to stay positive when everything is going right, isn't it? Yeah. It's easy to think positive when we feel healthy and well, but if illness or physical pain strike, all of a sudden fear jumps in. And so those are the times for us to be able to become aware of it and change our mind, change our thinking in that moment, tending our flock. The third and final one are the wise men. The wise men represent our divine intelligence and our intuition. In other words, our guidance. That are always leading us and directing us to that Christ within. To God's highest truths within us. But we must listen. We must listen and we must follow. 
the guidance, just like the wise men did. And so they were called wise men. So following it might not be convenient all the time. It may not always make others happy. It may seem counterproductive or even selfish. But when true divine intelligence and intuition shine upon us like the star from the east, shone upon the wise men, we must follow it. So our three symbols, there was no room in the inn, symbolizes our hearts and minds open and available to express God's highest truths. Shepherds tending their flocks symbolize our need to watch over our thoughts and our feelings on, and to keeping focused on God's highest truth. And the wise men symbolize our divine guidance that's always there leading us. How can you individually stand in these truths for yourself? This is the question. So I invite you now, if, if it's easy for you to stand, if you would stand, and let's stand together. In truth and light, grab a hand. And just pray this prayer with me. Beloved Holy God, we stand with our hearts and minds open and available. We stand willing to watch over our thoughts, feelings, beliefs, and attitudes, focusing on your highest truths, focusing on love, peace, compassion, forgiveness, deeper understanding, miracles, wondrous possibilities. We stand, beloved God, open and ready to follow your divine intelligence and intuition and to be your light, the light of Christ in this world. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. <laughs>